we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. We, we gon' have fun. Hey. We be on fire. We be lit lit. lit, lit. lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, Official Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Not none of you know my dad walk on. Man, we got a guy here today, y'all. OG in the city, man. You know, I had to get him over here. Uh, yeah. People, they, hey, everybody know what time it is when they see this man. Uh, they already know he been A1 since day one. Yes, sir. That boy Cottonmouth is in the building. Yes, sir. Cottonmouth, Jesse, South Dallas, Texas. Hey, <laughs> man. Jesse, so, Cottonmouth, Jesse, South Dallas, Texas. Yes, sir. Man, the South, man. The South, man, I always been that place, bro. Come when you that place. Soon as I you say the South, you know the first thing come to mind? What? Lady Love. Lady Love. <laughs> Man, don't play. Lady and, Love. And the second thing come to mind? Car Club. Car Club. Yeah, no. Anime. Anime, but you gotta also got you got to say cry babies. Cry babies. <laughs> uh-uh, don't do that. <laughs> and the, wait a minute, they keep going. And we got a one more. We got yeah. to say. UTB, Ron. It's all that. Shout out to Stan, man. Yes, man. <laughs> Under the bridge. Say, listen, man. Niggas really don't understand <laughs> the history. That's the heart. Say, man, I used to go to Bobby's, and I ain't gonna lie, man, I had a, a Tudo Coupe de Ville, man. Yeah. And I be drunk when I get there, right? Yeah. And so when I get there, I'm like, nigga, we finna go party. It be about three niggas with me, maybe, yeah. you know. And I get to I get there early, nigga. Early. And I'm sitting there in the car, right, drinking, yeah. and yeah, nigga. Nigga go to sleep right there right in the car. There. And, and wake then wake up and there. No, 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 yeah. sometime, but sometime everybody be leaving, be leaving man. This nigga you drunk, man. Go in there. Yeah, but you know that thing didn't close to late, man. Hey, five in the morning. That thing was serious, bro. Everything in the South back day one days was yeah. always late night mixture. The go DJ Fresh used to be DJing in that yeah, thing. I know man. Fresh. That's my boy right yeah. there, man. You need UTB. <laughs> UTB to, too. And, and go to and, and go to Mama Judy's. Yeah. Get something to eat. Yeah. And that's going to be the six in the morning. The ghetto club, man. The ghetto club. Stop playing, man. We go all man, day long. All day long. City lights, car Say, lines. house of jocks, nigga. Yeah, house of jocks. Say, y'all nigga better stop playing. But that for you, y'all nigga, just, I'm just going yeah. down through there with him just a little bit. And you know what's though? <laughs> it's not like that no more. No. Because of the, you know, the culture, man. The, you know, this, this violent young culture. Man, I didn't even, I play with these boys here. Play a club, live stick. All that, man. All, all at the strip club. We go all the way back to. See, the uh, Cliff Club came back. Cliff Club back. Yeah, the Cliff and, Club back. Looking good, too. And and um, it was one more I just, oh, Lakeside. Uh, Lakeside. Uh, that uh, RJ's RJ by, the, by lake. the lake. Same thing. Yeah, all that. Yeah. See, niggas ain't ready. <laughs> these all niggas that, man. Club Lexington, Club, club Trinsettles, yeah, Mid Point. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Man, you was out there dealing with it. Yes, sir. Original. Man, man so give me, man, what has changed since then to now? I know you spoke on it just a brief second right then, but what, when you go to a, if you decide to go, because we, you know, I'm at a place now where I don't even be going. I I'm like, I'm going to get out the way. Me going to the club uh, be like me going out of town for a concert. <laughs> The best, the best thing you can do nowadays is, is, is go out of town and go to an old school maze concert. Go out of town, go to a reggae fest, stuff like that. But in the city, nah, I'm low key, man. I'm, man. At, the house, I'm at the house with the GBs and the wife, and I'm chilling, man. Let's get to it. Yeah. So, um, oh, dang, what's going on? Sorry, babe. So tell me, um, where were you raised? You raised in Dallas, right? I was raised, what part? I, I was raised in South Dallas, Bunton, Dixon, okay. and Holland Hills. Man. With your mom and dad? Or? With my moms. My mom stayed in South. My dad is from Oak Cliff. My mom did years uh, in the penitentiary, got out the penitentiary, we stayed on Dixon, then we moved to Houston. How old were you when she went to the pen? Uh, probably about mm, nine, eight. Nine? How long, how, how many years was she gone? Four to five. Okay, so then who took care of you? Out, my dad was with my dad then. Okay. And then when she got out, we moved to Houston, and that's when I started you know, venturing to the hip-hop. Hip-hop, hip-hop and hip-hop stuff like that. Yeah. Did your dad move to Houston too? No, uh-uh. They were separated. My dad was on Holland Hills, my mom was in... Uh, South Dallas. Two different type of places. Mm-hmm. So did you go see your dad? Oh was yeah, he? we stayed with my dad too. So he was very influential in oh, your yeah. life. My, my, my dad, my dad's one, my dad's one got me the game on the king mentality. Okay. Not the slave mentality, you know. And tell me something that he taught you where um, that is concerned. He was in the streets for a long time, then got saved, became a deacon. Wow. He, he would always, you know, I've always been to the arts. <laughs> Cause I'm real, I'm real with the hip hop agenda. So I was started out with the arts, the graffiti, 
you know, spray paint while the break right. dancing and all that. Then growing up, getting to the streets, it was the same thing. He was the one talking about prayer, how prayer works, you know, um, getting out here, like the Bible say, the books say, you're going to get it with your mind and get it with your hands. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't put all that into me, you know, working on cars. Then once he figured, you know, I was into the arts, he was like, you're going to do something with it with your mind. You got to put it in their face, manifest it un un until, you know, the light or whatever. But, um, he taught me a lot of just about being a man, a stand-up man, be my own man, don't follow nobody. So when I started growing up and niggas pull up, get in the car, I don't think so, homie. I'm not getting in that car with you, you know. But when you were younger, though, and um, growing up, because you said you were in the streets a little bit, too, right? I was in the streets starting ninth grade. Okay, so, but at that age, when you got in the streets, he wasn't a deacon yet, or was he? He wasn't a deacon yet. But ninth grade, that's when we skipping school, going to Bills, looking for wax, so... That was my introduction into the you know, the real hip hop business because in the ninth grade we was uh, you know doing stuff for the school, DJing, mm -hmm. bringing our own equipment, stuff like that. But we were still like in the street selling little bullshit joints at school, and we had days we skipped school and go to Bill Records and look through vinyl. Mm -hmm. You know that's mm -hmm. when you were sampling. You were like we started recording then, but uh, you know back then it was kind of different because it was fun 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 mm -hmm, fun mm -hmm. you know it wasn't so much of this violence or i'm the baddest motherfucker alive you know it was all hip-hop you battled at school and beating on the walls and you know the talent shows and you know just being young like that in the high school from a ninth grade year to the time i graduated it was always like you know we always had our own equipment so i try to tell young cats all the time being in the hip-hop game young is so much you can do if you got equipment you know, you can always throw your own parties. We threw our own parties in high school just to pack the jam, you know, stuff like that to, to get ourselves out there. You know, you just don't see that kind of vibe no more, but that's how I grew up, you know. If, nice. if, if somebody had a house party, we're going to get that phone call because back mm -hmm. then, you know, you're passing out your cards. Mm -hmm. And then when the high school wants you to DJ after the football game, we're going to DJ the foot after the football game. And, you know, back then we mixed in stuff like, uh, Shabba Ranks with Sade, mm. Tour de France with Sade, you right. know, yeah. stuff like that. And we we, we rapping off Just Ice instrumentals or Coogee Rap instrumentals or MCA instrumentals. So my introduction into hip hop, you know, in the street game was kind of like two and two. Yeah. You know, and then when they start, you know, attacking the module of hip hop and it started with the, the guys with the money behind the rappers, you know. And now we're getting into this place where it's, it's the rapper that's being destroyed. So they down to the last molecule of what we call this hip hop culture. But when I think about the um, <clears throat> you growing up, because I think about children and their parents. Yeah. And as much as your dad changes life and so forth, when he changes life, I guarantee you, you didn't change your life right then and there with him. No. So when he tried to turn around and be like, hey, you don't need to be doing this, you know, try to educate you on the right way to do it. You were you rebellious against him at that point and period of time? No, it's like, you know, my dad talked, we listen. Okay. You know, he had respect. You know, he make you feel in the blanks. Mm. You know, my dad was like that. If he made you feel in them blanks, you knew the whooping was coming. <laughs> you better say it again. You know, I told you to do what? You did what? There it is. And by the time you did that, that second fill in blank, that belt coming, or that man. hand coming across that shirt, bring your ass. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah get, get real, but yeah. I needed that. You know what I'm saying? I need that too. Yeah, exactly. I needed you that, know? man. Like, a, a lot of people don't, they don't do it that way no mm -hmm. more, and it doesn't cause a lot of problems oh, yeah. here. The first time I ever got drunk and went by the house and thought I was doing something, and Oh, he ain't gonna say nothing. Smell that beer. Why don't you ever bring your? There it is. You know. I How many of y'all were there? I got uh, I got three brothers. You know, I got um. So all boys, no girls. I got one sister. Okay. I got two step brothers, and I got my my oldest brother, my um, my other oldest brother. He's part of a, a band called the Cut in Dallas. He's like a rock and roll band. His name Adrian. He uh play all type of instruments. Mm. I got another little brother, and I have another little brother that passed named Corey. He passed away. Rest in peace. And he was rapping before I was rapping. That's what really got me into rapping is my little brother. But I really got into rapping after my best friend named Trey died. So, so y'all were just into the music, but your father, was he into music as well, or your mom? Probably, probably when they was young. When they were young. Because but my dad was a Vietnam vet. Okay. And he came home from a, um, what they call it, uh, when you get dismissed from health health mm -hmm, problems, you got mm -hmm. shot in the hip mm. in Vietnam. Purple is it purple heart? Or? Forgot when no. it's called when they when they uh, honorable discharge. Honorable discharge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he went to Vietnam in nineteen. 
mm. that little era. And you didn't want to do that. No, I didn't. I didn't. He. You didn't want to go to the military. I mean, but he taught us not to. He taught us like, nah, we ain't messing with that. Really? Yeah. Although he went, he don't want y'all. Yeah, he got drafted. Didn't okay. want to go. Oh, okay. See that? That's the era of your parents getting you drafted. No mm -hmm. Marvin Gaye, you know, mm -hmm. Heron, Weed, mm -hmm. you know, and he got drafted and didn't want to go. My mom, you know, was probably having us. We was young, stuff like that. So we went right. through. We, we went through all of that, you know. But when he came back home and. Stuff like that. They wasn't together, but he would always pop up and get us or whatever. Then, as I got older, it transferred into hey man, we got to be with our dad to learn how to be a man. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So, so the music now, okay, because you know the music when it first started off, and you see hip hop where it, where it is. Because back then, yes, you you did the street, you did the music, but it wasn't like how the street and the music is rap is now in today's society. Kids feel like I got to be on the street to be able to have something to rap. Yeah, but it don't blend. Rapping and dope game do not go together. Then why do they feel so? Because everybody, because I've seen we, so many we, of them do because it. Because we've been influenced by Colors. Um, what else was the other movie? Uh, Colors, Men's Society. Men's Society, Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood. Um, What's DMX and Nas movie? Uh, that's uh, Belly. Belly. Mm -hmm. See, it's the, it's the conditions of the, the master teacher to the crickets. And, you know, we live in a, a state of mind now where... Ignorance is bliss and consciousness is, you know, silent. But it's know. more tradition now because these younger kids, a lot of these younger kids never even watch Belly. They never, never ever watch Colors. Yeah, but they on games talking shit to each other, you know, and they watching these movies and, you know, they shooting on the game and thinking you go outside your house and do that. Mm -hmm. But coming up, you know, we got to remember that EZ was the first street CEO before Master P. So when you had cats like back in the gap, it was a bunch of EZs. Then it was a bunch of Master P's. Yeah, you you one of those guys. And it was a bunch of Suge Knights. Mm. Correct. You know, and then they started attacking the module. Let's take out the CEOs first. So you started having record labels getting Rico cases. Uh, the CEO got popped because he had to he had he had to fund the, the record label. And now you they're know. doing it again. It's never stopped. Yeah, mm. I think like I said, one of the core re things that we have to look at is how you came into the music and the, and, the, and the implementations that you were able to bring when you came into the music, yeah. you know, like dealing with different ways that, cause I, I'm one of those guys that felt like, I always felt like the South was not given the proper respect, you know, and yeah. with the way that we came with the music. Remember the Down South uh, uh, Hustler? I was uh, on Down South Hustler. Okay, and all those different times, yeah. they excluded uh, the South back during those times. Yeah, back in those times. We, we embraced each other because yeah. that's all we had. Yeah. And I think a lot of times because guys that's, you know, in our era, yeah. uh, I think a lot, of, they don't understand the way that we built the foundation yeah. when it come down the way we wrap our arms around the South. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's something that uh, now people are they, they they forget about that. That's yeah. why I'm so I'm a you know I'm Pimp C fanatic. Man, you you I'm know a how UGK I am. Fan. I'm, yeah. I'm a screwhead. Yeah. So, all that. so did you, you get to meet him? Who? Oh yeah, he got a song with him. Oh yeah, Pimp C. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm the first person out of Dallas to do a song with Pimp C. I'm the first have 100 percent Cotton Mouth. Yeah. Produced mm. by DJ Snake, a nemesis. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah. I got in the game through DJ Snake, just like he was like a father figure too. Like when Nemesis and MC Ron C was blowing up. That was DJ Snake making. I was in a production deal with him, and I got signed to a group called PKO out of out of San Antonio. So going to go record over there with Snake, it was kind of like the same thing. He'll give he'll give us three four hundred dollars, man. Don't go to the club tonight. Y'all take y'all young ass home. Go get some weed. Fuck with some hit, some hoes or some some shit like that, you know. But we was young, you know. But people never understand the whole thing of. Uh, remember, we coming up. We always say screw love. Yeah, that was the real thing. You know, screw love meant man show love, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then when Master P came with the with the whole involvement of gathering everybody, he really took the whole South somewhere back then. You know what I'm saying? Because all he had to do was just like keep doing he was doing everybody was following the path of Master P. So I come up doing Crawfish Fist, Back in the Gap, you know, um Bay Bay and Jab, you know, uh DJ Babysitter. Yeah. Um, man, who else can I name? going down that way. Just a bunch of people that was involved, Mean Green, the uh, Wicked Crickets. Yeah. You know, the Greg Streets. I've been knowing Greg since I was 16, 17 years old. 
So I came up in the game under a guy named Alvin Scott. He's on Lexington. Okay, okay. Alvin T. Baby Scott mm -hmm. put my first group out called South Coast. So me learning as a young cat about just this whole hip hop game from being an artist to a CEO, how the DJs work, how the clubs work, how the radio work. That was my biggest advantage, you know what I'm saying, in, this, in, in the city, in, in the state period, you know. So when I got around screw and stuff like that, you know, it was kind of like seeing the difference between my city and Houston because of the screw love, you know. Yeah, that's that's live, man. You know, I'm over here thinking about small stuff like Top Cat or Catfish Smith, nigga. Man, what you mean, Jumbos? <laughs> <laughs> Catfish Floyds. <laughs> No, you know, I just like I said, you one of the guys, man, that sticks out when it come down to, uh, you know, we've been hearing a lot of legend talk, a lot of people talking about the legends in the city. Yeah. And it's just like um, you don't really have to tell anyone that you're a legend. You have to show them by your actions. Exactly. And and the people will tell you who the legend is. Exactly. But when I when I when I see, you know, a lot of times in the Dallas area, yeah. the, the legendary status is something that people don't really applaud I feel the way they should you know what I mean yeah. meaning and it ain't nobody's fault I can't blame no individual but I can say and I do tell Bobo this a lot it's our fault it's the ones who should have been we should have been more more precise on how I, we I can't I can't say that because I, you got to understand where you at right now and where you was when you was young you was a fan you was a consumer correct and now we have the media outlets to put the look on the history of Dallas yeah but then you, you know gotta look at you because gotta back back then it wasn't like that Dallas wasn't the a place for the hip hop. It was a consumer, 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 consumer. I market. get it, but you, you still had the run seeds. You still had the the snakes. You yeah, still had, you had the. Yeah. You, wait a minute. You still had you. You had a lot of different people here that pretty much the DOCs that really yeah, but it was here, but me. but that's after me. But know? still, y'all was here. Yeah, so but, at the end of the day, y'all got but, a responsibility. Yeah, but we didn't have uh, magazines. We didn't have this. We didn't have outlets we didn't have the publishing and we trying to top Troy Eggman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, Leon Lett and they was all on the news. I get it. But you then what, what about these other dudes that's making it happen in a city? We didn't have the we When I say I'm, like the DJ screws like you keep mentioning and those guys yeah, but our the key keys. But our radio stations didn't support us like ninety seven the, the box supported them. So that's what I'm saying. Why like, do you think that was though? Because you went and had situations with the radio station. Yeah. Why do you think that was? You was A and R. You did a lot of stuff because but. because they didn't understand up here at that time because we only had one radio station. That was K104. If you go to Houston, they got Magic 102, 97 on the beat. They got you know they K N O N 89.3, 90.9, whatever it was. We had K104 when we had 90.9. That was a community station ran off of contributions or uh, you know people people giving money to keep the station open k104 was the only 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 business in town so just imagine you trying to go up there and and get your record played between a jive rca a def jam and those other people that was out that wasn't happening you know what i'm saying and then you go down the street and you you run into the screw love and it's just all love and people saying screw love man let me give one yeah man screw love you know whatever it might be and then you knew but if i end up on the screw tape that's like being on the radio at that time mm -hmm. but the support of dallas wasn't thorough for dallas artists not just rappers you know what i'm saying dallas artists period period but people got to understand again for ron c to go platinum for nemesis to go gold you know and they was getting major play in houston but it was the name uh, and this was a long time much for your base yeah. last night and trendsetter was top Top bankers, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. So when you think about just the 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 the, the way that things were in, explain to me when you the, the the altercation where you were dealing with the radio station and you felt like that, you know, how all that transpired. Man, young, full of drugs, aggravated, <laughs> you know what I mean? And trying to get to it and 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 miss and miss con the misconception of y'all should do it. Break it down to me. Don't. don't I mean, this is our history. It's a that, business. You know, here it's, it's a, it's I, I want to hear what happened. Yeah, but it's a business. So what happened? Not knowing the business. Not when knowing, you went up there, what did you say? I didn't. We didn't say too much. Just bammed on the ones and went to check it and turn shit up. You know. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> so, y'all went down there for business. For y'all business. was like, you niggas ain't gonna come down here and not show us the recognition we deserve. It wasn't about that. It was like getting tired of going to Radio Monday. Okay. And then you're going home waiting on that, you know, what they call it, three to six. Yeah. At yeah. Six PM. You know, we didn't start getting no love in a city like that man till Greg Street showed up. You know, and even before Greg, you know, uh Skip Cheating played a lot of pimpster. Yeah, yeah. You know, diggers and house shoes, or I wanna act like that. Yeah. Pimpster, pimpster was the only local cat getting played. Okay. You know, go skip cheating, he played some pimpster. Yeah. You know, and I was like, Well, you gonna play pimpster, you gonna play some cotton map, you know. But I'm in the streets. So, you know, I ain't have too many clean records besides, uh, you know, kite mouth, smoking out of your mouth, getting dry, you yeah. know, stuff like that. But I went down there, I mean, Skip Cool, you know, he, he he taught me a lot after that situation because I thought I fucked up. When you went down there, you went down there to say, y'all going to get it right. Man, why he was on the earth? Bam, don't want everything. What, he didn't come out? Yeah, he did. Like, man, y'all tripping, you know, and Ken Dow called the police. <laughs> Goddamn police put the handcuffs on me. Damn. And then Ken Dow came out and said, I understand what he's trying to do. Let him go. Oh, that's that's fine. And they let me go. Because he knew I was just trying to rep my shit. Because we in the clubs, man, it's D-Town. Yeah. You know, rep, repping our shit. You know what I'm saying? Because for a long time, like I say, Dallas was just a consumer market. And to represent your shit, people looked at it like, what they doing? You know what I'm saying? Remember when everybody used to have hats had South Side on them or West Side on them or North Side on them? That was the whole beginning of all that shit. Yeah. You know? So just imagine when Lil John came with the, who you, who you with? Who you with? You know what I'm saying? That kind who of shit. With? Dallas was like who one of the conquered cities. I was just like, man, we finally get to rep this shit. You know what I'm saying? Then my era with me doing what I was doing, I, I was making historical markers. Yeah. From doing big concerts, doing club concerts. And then, you know, in that period of time, Going to the 2000s, all my OGs own the clubs. You know, I, I know Jamie, I know Lil Keith, I know Alvin, I know Keith Black, I know all these guys from Midpoint to the Arlington Clubs, the Fort Worth Clubs, and then I'm going to the After Hours. Mm-hmm. And I'm hanging and banging, and, you know, with, with, with the street cats. And back then, you promote music with a CD or a flyer or the old school sampler cassettes, motherfucker, give you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So it, it, it was just a different. A different vibe than what it is now, but the history on Dallas, you know, we we all can take the blame, but people got to know that it just wasn't no one. Well, it was a couple of people, but they weren't putting a historical marker where it needed to be as far as the city go to to put the shit in the archives. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you like I said, man, you sat here and seen and watched a lot of stuff, and you was passionate the whole time and that's yeah. what make you different okay yeah, exactly. your passion is what dri- what drove you yeah exactly you know what I'm saying <laughs> but being young and dumb too yeah. but it was kind of like from that from that situation that happened that opened up the doors for me to be in Tyler okay for me to be in a radio station on Longview okay and even at that time back then after you ever I- go down there and, uh, to uh, 43 Club uh, Rory yeah you went down there my boy man, you know all that man that's my oh, guy man. right all there all through henderson all that man you know and then back then we had the mom and pops we had uh og floyd you know in yeah Longview. yeah yeah you know floyd gonna say it out for you that wild thing you know, yeah. yeah all that man i got it and i had a uh partner his old man he used to own a bunch of clubs in longview and then once i started connecting game with yeah. the with the with the h-town boys or Stuff like that. That's when I really got my eyes on the the, the big picture, you know. Because yeah. for, for a long time, I was always worried about the the local shit. You know what I mean? Yes, so You know. So you once know. I once I learned that, you know, it's worldwide Texas. That took me to a whole nother level. You like I said, the the thing. How was it? Give me a pimp C story. You know, I always get y'all for that. You give me a. You got to give me one. You know what I'm saying? Give one me that a, you never given before. That you know how I am about them. I'll be serious, but I'll be on Bobo and everybody else. Like, man, give me one. I don't want that same. You know, we don't want that same uh-huh. drop. <laughs> I got plenty of pimp C stories. No, but give me the one that ain't nobody really just gonna know. Like, damn. I got a I got a pimp C story this and, and just and just a just a real one. Uh South by Southwest. We had a um, a showcase, South by Southwest. It's me, Pookie and Lucci, Big Chief, and UGK was the headliner. Okay. And this is a show of South by Southwest full of Britons. The flag had a had a great Britain flag in front of this club. So the whole club full of nationalities of people. And Pimp C upstairs or whatever, and we walk in and it's uh me, Pookie and Lucha and our little old crew and I see Bond and Bomb 
Say, Cotton, who you got with you? Y'all come on up here, whatever, whatever, and pimp up there, you know, chilling. And I walk upstairs and you see Pook and Lucha dap him up and I'm like, damn, pimp, you know what I'm saying? Getting to see Pook and Lucha and them. He like, cut man, who you got with you, baby? Now this this Pookie, this Lucha, whatever. What y'all smoking on? You know what I'm saying? Like some good shit, nigga. We roll up fighting. Ooh, man, that's some bad shit. You know what I'm saying? He sit there and smoking and shit. And then at this present time, it's like they going on stage after all, let's get to performing. And we see Pimp walk this little back way to get to the stage. Man, y'all niggas, check me out, baby. You know what I'm saying? We all laughing and shit. I'm gonna tell you, boy, one thing, man. Y'all keep representing this motherfucking Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like talking and shit. But he was always like that. So when you see him pimp, you represent Texas, you're gonna be like, that's motivation, nigga. Yeah, he yeah. Be like open on, hugging, hugging all us and shit. Man, what's up, nigga? What's up, baby? You know, again, the screw love. You know, and just to see Pook and Lucha face, like, man, that's some real shit. Like nigga, pimp, see you on, you know. And then one time I did a show in Huntsville. And I had my little little crew with me. He came in my room. He came in my room. He looking everybody up and down. He say, y'all niggas real. I said, yeah, we real, my nigga. What's up? I'm just checking you boys out. Y'all cowboy down. We had Dallas Cowboy shit on everywhere. Y'all boys is real. He like the Texas. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, goddamn, pimp, you know? And then we did the show. And this when I found out his mama was managing him. See, I, I didn't know that. Okay. And then after the Huntsville show, we backstage and, you know, we smoking and shit and I get a chance to meet mama. I'm thinking I'm just meeting somebody's mom. And he was like, nigga, my mama managed me, nigga. Ain't now nigga gonna fuck up with me, nigga. Nigga, you, you disrespect my mama? Cut my mouth? Continue, boy. You know, that's how he was, you know. <laughs> that's lies. So Pimp C was always that cat. He had it, that energy. Yes, sir. But people would say, was it... This kind of energy you had was motivational energy. You walk from pimp and think you can go goddamn be tackling the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But That's what we need in today's society. Do you, have you ever met anybody else who was even come close to who he was? Pimp? Mm -hmm. I would say um, Screw. I would say um, Sibo. Um, and I would say meeting um, Big Daddy Kane. Dang. Oh, okay. That's live. And then being young, I met my idol, Karras One, at an MC Ron C concert in Garland at uh, the skating ring when I was young. Wow. That's live. Because Karras One is my idol. So just to meet Karras One, I went in the car like a kid crying like a bitch. <laughs> no. You yes, must I learn. No, wow. you know, that. I can sing. Boom, every boom. Love's going to get you. Yes. That's the hardest one for see, me, being, nigga. See, being young for me and finding out Boogie Down Productions only pressed up wax, that's what made me start skipping school. Okay. Because I would skip school to go find every fucking Boogie Down production vinyl I could find. You know, because they only pressed their shit on vinyl back then. Damn. You know, so that's how I got up on Just Dice, Puma, Levi 187, uh, the Comedy Nice, uh, Miss my Melody. Boy. You know, I knew the whole crew. Man. You know? And that was, that was the time, like I said before, when it was like, what you gonna do with your life when you graduate? Yeah, you yeah. Know, you know, shit like that. Well, you know? explain to me that, 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 the time when you and when, when you and uh, Pimp C put that project together, when y'all put that song together, just give me a rundown on how you guys. Man, done we was that. recording a lot of stuff for PKO. And okay. I, and I was recording my album. Okay. And back then it was real studio time, ten hour blocks, twelve hour blocks, and you go from three to whatever time at night. And I came to the studio, and Snake was like, "Well, now my partner Pony J Nino was like, nigga, you doing a Pimp C song today?'" And I'm like, "Nigga, stop playing with me," you know. And back then you gonna watch Rap City. You know, mm -hmm. whatever music box song, I'm thinking they bullshitting or whatever it might be. And uh, um, my guy that was behind uh, Youngster Records, PKO, uh, Mark Adam, Magic Mark. Shout, shout out to Mark, man. He got a he got a spot in San Antonio called Mark Adams Burgers. That's the joint. If you ever in San Antonio, fuck with it, man. But uh, this cat here, you know, we was on the Midwest Records right on Greenville and Forest Lane, and he, you know, I stood there like, man, you gonna do a song with PMC today? Like you bullshitting, you know what I'm saying? Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> you know, y'all playing. But I'm down to like the ending of recording my first album. And he's like, man, it's time to go get him, you know. So Damn. I, I got my ass up. I'm like, you, you want me to go get him? Yeah, go get him. Tell you what, go get him. I'm like, man, stop playing with me, bro. Like, y'all bullshitting and playing. You didn't believe him. I did not believe him. Not knowing that I already talked to him, showed him my album cover and everything. You already seen it. Man, he already was up on top he of him. He liked you know? it. He loved it. And then when I picked him up, 
You know what I'm saying? He come out the apartment. It wasn't no fucking, you know, yeah, no. pin me the location. Mm -hmm. You had to Hell no. listen to the directions yeah. and shit like that. And I went down the street, well, not too far where we were, to pick him up and come out this guy in apartment. I damn near lost it. You seen that nigga come out that hole? Man, I got fly. Bubba Good. Nah, he regular dude. Regular nigga back then. But you know, nah, he was fly, but you know, he regular dressed up. But I'm talking about Bubba Good's out the game. What he say, Poop, man? I'm pulling in the car for getting what that. What he there. say, man? When he get in there, man? Man, what's up, baby? <laughs> you know they talk about. What's up, baby? Like, what's up, man? Man, shit, you ready to do this shit? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm gonna play some beats. Yeah, I'll pay me some shit. So we riding back to the studio and shit, but the whole time I'm shaking like this, driving. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm seeing this old. You know, we stopped at the gas station before we get to the back to the studio, and we sat down, we talked, and I'm rolling up and shit. You know, and back then we had the we had the whole corn. You know, we called it uh, cornbreads and green back then. Okay. So we got the whole little old mixture of what we what we was doing in the South Coast time, the Third Coast time at that moment, getting our mind right. Yeah. You know, so he went to. You know, hey man, I heard a lot of shit about you. Heard you can rap this in third. So nigga, spit something for me. I'll be riding. We listen to me. I'm with the rapping and shit. Cause at this point, I'm ready. Like nigga, I'm. What rhyme did you rap, man? Man, I don't remember. You can't remember what you I don't did. I remember the rap, but you know, we was back then it was freestyling. <laughs> yeah, nigga, just riding. So we riding back and forth, going back and forth. Yeah, freestyling. like okay, nigga, you That's got something. That's real, bro. That's you know? heavy right there. But when we got to the studio, we kept the same vibe. So before we came up with uh. Niggas be born big sweet yeah. tonight, trying to stay satisfied. Yeah, we had three other little hooks and shit that we was doing, but we was vibing so hard in the studio. We like, man, let's get them do this bitch right here. And like, you know, now people record nigga to nigga, each nigga by itself. Yeah, back then we had two mics, so we was catty corner. Okay, so the whole song was one take. Damn, it wasn't like, hey man, punch me in, we'll go back. The whole song, one was take. One take. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And, and we laughing the whole time, like nigga, that shit jamming like this. Can't you know get it. Saying? Yeah. And he taught me a lot about the whole confidence, the whole persona. You know, and back then, you know, I was even humble. Then he was like, "Cotton man, one day you got to stick your nose up at these niggas, man." You know, man. But that's how he was. But he embraced me from net, and then it didn't stop because I would go when I when I fucked up at the radio station. I went to Houston and it was already known down where this the nigga that tore the radio station up. And Damn. the first person I fucked with in Houston was D Rec from Rec Shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just interviewed him. Yeah. Yeah. D Rec my dude, you know, mastermind. And it was the same thing. And then when I when I met D Rec, it was history for me again. So I knew God was involved. Cause my first day meeting him, I met Screw, I met Watts. The first day Screw and Michael Watts met each other, I'm right there. That's live. You know. That's live. And I'm like, damn, you know. I just did a song with Pimp on my first and I'm not getting out here from turning the fucking station up and people like, man, this young nigga tore the station up now here getting came on for ass and now I'm in Houston trying to, you know, I ain't trying but I'm just continuing my shit, you know. Yeah. And I'm damn like my first day meeting D Rick and Rick Shop because I was a Fat Pat fan. Fat Pat damn. died. Fat Pat Fat Pat died on my birthday. Damn. February the third. So when I get down there, I'm like, damn, you know, get in where I fit in and rapping and shit and D Rick was like, man, nigga can rap like a bitch, you know. How yeah. did you? How did you? Uh, when when you heard that Fat Pat had got shot, or it was down in Austin, wasn't it? Yeah, what? but I didn't know that until I got there. No, Ooh. back then you had the cassettes with the number on them. Yeah, I called D. Rick weeks at a time. Like, man, I'm gonna come around and fuck with you. I'm cutting my this and this, and I'm just shooting my shooting my shit. Like, man, come on down here, damn me. Fuck with you. I didn't heard of you because back then I said everybody has heard of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, shit like that. And it went, it went like that with a lot of cats, but just for me to be there and see Screw and Watts meet each other. That's heavy. You know, and I, my first time meeting Slim Thug, him and Watts in a black Nova, and they pulled up and I'm like, damn, I go Slim Thug, here go Michael Watts, here go DJ Screw, and I'm like, damn. We, we even took a picture. I don't know who got the picture. Damn. You know. Well, that's but, epic right there. Yeah, but I, 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 I learned Right then and there, like, okay, it's time, it's time, it's time for the, it's time for the, the MC to take over because it wasn't about, I wasn't top notch on my beat. I was just a, a, a young cat trying to be an MC, not a rapper, like an MC on some third coast shit. So I'm in Houston rapping my ass off. Man, you know what I'm saying, man, they they seeing it and loving it, man. You know, but and they but, that, but you didn't me tell and, me about and, that, and, and they embracing me because they know in Dallas it was all crazy, all fucked up for. Whoever was trying to do something in the biz, they know like, but well, these niggas don't get the love that we get. But cause, why? Because they had screw. And they had that store that they talk about, that, that CD shop that they what? They had Southwest Wholesale. That's what it was. 
Yeah, they had I heard South, a lot about that. They had Southwest Wholesale, but beyond that, they had DJ Screw. And that that's what held to held it together. And then when you got down there and started hearing Screw Love, Screw Love, Screw Love, Screw Love. It was uh, it was up. And then you down there with flyers and people wouldn't buy CDs out your car. They were like, man, give me a flyer, I'm going to the store. Let me ask you this. So let's go back to that that day and that moment you found out that uh, Pat Pat uh, had passed. been yeah had passed had, had gotten shot. That's the day I went and met D Ray. Yeah, how was the energy and how did you find out? I'm just trying to. When I walked in the studio, they had a uh, wrote on the wall his name R. P. Then the birthday, damn the the, 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 death, the death date, and I said, damn, that's my birthday. So again, within myself, or what you was talking about, like okay, God with me. Yeah, because I'm I by myself. Yeah, and every time I went to Houston, I've always been by myself. Yeah, but what made it good for me is that I grew had I grew up half ass in Houston from Dixon, so to go to Houston as a young man, I knew my way around Houston when I got there. So I pulled up by myself, and I'm meeting all these cats I done heard of. I'm meeting ESG, I'm, you know. Yeah, but like shout a, out ESG, man. But a, it's my guy. But a boom in my brain was like, come outside and we smoking a blunt, me and Rick talking. And Screw pulled up, and I'm like, damn, DJ Screw in my brain, like, this some god damn. And Michael Watson Slim Thug pulled up. This is a young Slim Thug, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, here I am. Braids. Everything, pimples on his face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, braids. You know, and I'm there. You know, I'm like, damn, this is a historical moment, you know. And Screw, you know, we all getting full of it, and Screw kept saying, you see him watching? You see him watching. Was that when he had? I'm trying to get where you at. No, this nine, that, this nine eight ninety nine. Nine eight ninety nine. This eight, before nine, I did the rally boys. This when he did that this song when he did big pick and all of them. He was he did that whole album Slim Thug did. Again, that's was, when he that's he, he did, did that did, whole. Yeah. That was that time. I he know got, that he I'm, got back at Little Mario. That's right, Little Mario Nim. I remember that. I remember exactly when that was. And I and I built all those relationships was coming from me. At Rec Shop, just chilling because Rec Shop had the whole hip hop vibe. No deal, make a beat bang for hours. And, you know, they had the whole setup of the writers and the production and the artists. Like, how did you, but, but see, and you were down there in, you was in Houston, but you kept your Dallas, you know, your, yeah, your I came, roots. I you come, kept I your roots, back though. Because, because you know what I, mean? I was the first cat going back and forth. East Texas, you didn't see niggas how they'll try to act like they've, you know, you get over here with this certain group of people, yeah. you start trying to rap like these niggas and act nah, like, uh -uh, I'm nah. just being real, you've seen this yeah, before. Yeah, I've seen that. But these see, do that. OG Ron C is my family, and, and Big Hawk is my family. So with, within that whole relationship, uh, me even learning about Fat Pat's death, I didn't know Hawk at that time. Okay. So within my dealings down there, you know, I, I got tight with Hawk. So it'd be like I'd be down there fucking off and I did I forty five with, with Lil Flip. Okay. When he said that song we blow in though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, before that flow come on, you hear my drop saying cotton mouth, cotton candy, I'm the first rap on top of in front of Flip on I forty five. That whole go hard too. Yes. Man, I love that song right So Flip. The, so to come from that into be grown and end up with this on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it say Hawk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how tight I got with his brother. Yeah. And once I like, man, I your brother died and once I met Hawk, you know, stuff like that. But then back then, but, Houston was the Mecca for the rappers. So anywhere you was, if you're in the parking lot of cornbread, man, you could be in a cipher. But you gotta realize Houston had an opportunity at that time. They may have been bigger than anything that was going on at that time. You, yeah, they you think was. about it, because it, they they had the momentum. They I was. remember that. Yeah, and, and, and people up here got and, and people in Dallas was going to Houston. When Screw did his interview in Murder Dog Magazine, he had a whole paragraph like, man, people from Dallas come down here, buy me out. Yeah. Because, because on the street game, everybody from Dallas would go to H-Town and score a lot of shit. Yeah. But it just, that time was a different time. Even, man, it was a different time, man. man. he screwed the world up, but the main thing is the love. The love. The he love. didn't ask you for no money. It was just it, love. It was just, man, give me that wax. You heard on wax? Man, Kiki told a story like, you know, when I would go in there, he loved the way I rap, and he started sh just sharing yeah. it. It was like, man, and, and I spent time with yeah. it. Then when I give it ESG, it's the same, same thing. thing. Like, they just tell yeah. him, just like you. Yeah. So he was built up around yeah. love. And when man. you met the people that screwed up, it's not rappers. Like, when I met Big Bub, you know, Little Black, ILD, when I met all these cats, Shawty Mac, all these cats that was like around him, you know, everyday people, it was kind of like the same thing connection. You know, for me to meet the Southport Coalition, meet K. Ray on them, you know, it was kind of like that, the whole conglomerate of, of organizing the 
a fist and, and love. Cause yeah. the screw love was real. Yeah. But when the beat came on in the studio, the beat came on. And they didn't give a damn. You was the hardest nigga, the craziest nigga, nigga, do you got something. Yeah. The talent, you know. Well, you let me let me ask you this, and we're gonna pull we're gonna fast forward into today's time. Yeah. I w- before you ask him. Oh, that, you wanna I, keep him back there? No, 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 no. Where did the the name Cottonmouth come from? Smoking weed. <laughs> Oh. Your mouth get dry. Damn mm-hmm. sure do. That's why I say with a K, not a C, because ain't no snake in me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to ask you about like. Because people thought, since I came on a DJ Snake, I called myself Cottonmouth because of a snake. That's why I spelled it with a K, not a C, because ain't no snake in me. That's mm-hmm. live. That's all you the way know, live. Snake is my partner. That's my, that's my OG. That's my big bro. Taught me everything I know about this music game. You know, but you know, the name Cottonmouth come from. They used to call me Jesse Jess. I ain't have mm-hmm. a rap name. I started out writing. We ain't talked about that, but I started out writing. I wrote two songs on. Remember when Chic Fool? Yeah. Chic what? Fool, I wrote two songs on that. That whole man. I used to do it, nigga. Yeah. What did you tell me, nigga? She <laughs> all all through this whole really. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Today, but nigga. Then, I'm you can still do it. What? You know. You I, do I, I was it? fucking ain't with. Uh, I can't do. Don't get it twisted. I was fucking twisted. with uh, Tommy Kwan, Ishiban Records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know who? Earthquake, Vanilla Ice. Yeah, I pen little shit for Vanilla Ice. I pen little shit for them. But it's me, 16, 17 years old, getting five hundred dollars a verse. What's the That's biggest love, um, person you ever pen for? Vanilla Ice was the back then, wasn't he? Back then, back then, I, back then he was then, big. I ain't gonna say penmanship like this. Kind of like, you know, it was a guy named Ricky Ricardo, my manager, Bo Blunt, that that, that was behind Pimpster. He okay, was the one that kept us around. Cause when we was kids, we opened up for MC Hammer. Oh yeah, remember when MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice had their run? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was talking was about. Together. That's when they were together. We mm-hmm. was opening up back then. That's live. And we was kids, so we on stage with beat machines and shit and just doing our thing. But my my best friend, may he rest in peace, he was the one when he passed, and I wanted to get in front of the mic. Before Dang. then, I was just writing. Writing raps and man, say this, say this, say this, say this, whatever. Wow, you know. man, you know, I, like I said, I want to fast forward a little bit just to before I get y'all here to talk about the Mo Three era. Got to talk about that. R.I.P. the Mo Three. Um, I always try to keep his name alive on this show. Got gotcha, you, man. Um, that's one thing I'm gonna do. People don't yeah. understand the history is in keeping talking about different things that he accomplished. Yeah. He accomplished a lot in in a small amount of time. Yeah. Um, and it was hard. Like, yeah. and I didn't rock with it like that at first. Yeah, I'm but, one of them but, niggas that didn't rock with it at first. My my game to everybody is just we can't do it in vain. Correct. We we can't listen to people say love Nate Dog, love Nipsey. Yeah. West Coast. Yeah. We can't go down south, love screw, love Hawk, love Fat Pat, love Mafia, love three two. Love Hawk. We can't go East Coast. Love Pun. Love Big L. Love Big. All of them patriarchs. And then you come here, and we still have people talking crazy about uh, the dead. I agree. So that's the concept that I'm out to let people know the history of Dallas. I got a new album coming out, Killer Cotton Fields Part Two. And 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 if if youngsters just start, on, you ain't got to know Mo Three. You can start a song. I man, Love Lone Little Three, and start showing the love, love yeah. celebrating his life. And changing because music is is a savage beast and music is a metaphysic. Music is a spiritual thing, a spiritual realm, and this the, this is the only city where people don't get that. So once we start uplifting the C Scruggs, the man, LL3s, shout out to his whole family been on here. You know what I'm saying? Once we start uplifting our our dead, big Alpha nemesis, yeah, and people are just not used to doing that here. But once they learn it, man, that's what put the energy into the vibe when you're in the studio. You know what I'm talking about? That's what puts the energy into it and makes people like, man, everybody know three. Everybody love that boy. Everybody, man, will check them cats out. They said, long live. You a Mo3 fan? Well, check these young niggas out. And that's the whole concept that people need to understand here is like representing Vane ain't going to get us nowhere because this is, all, this is all brand new to a whole city. That's right. Let me ask you about that day when you seen or heard that that had happened on the highway. Just where were you at and what were you doing? I don't know if I was in my car. I was doing something and it came across the media things. And I felt like it was just fucked up. Did you know, Did you think it was real at first? I knew it was real. You did? Yeah, I knew it was real. And but man, how long before that had you even spoken to Mo3? I met three here and there. I really met him like twice, talked to him at my partner, um, Ray Ray Studio, where he recorded it. 
And then I talked to him once in real life when he had uh, him and uh, me, him and C. Scruggs. We had a little conversation, took some pictures and shit. And I uh, recently brought him across and met my little bro Stubberlene Trap before he even got on. Okay. When you when you think about just the whole time that the stuff was going on with him and, and the way that the city was looking at the time when all this stuff was going on, mm -hmm. um, did you ever think, man, you know, how could I stop this or how could we change the narrative? Because it was intense, and I was here, so I seen it. But, yeah, but I, I, I didn't but, have boss talk at the time. But he didn't get killed by those he was beefing with. Uh, of course, but I'm just saying, just just the beef in hand because it seemed intense. I just think people, people, whoever pulled that move was caught up in the social media game as ignorant niggas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They just some ignorant niggas on their phone that, and, and the devil took over them and just couldn't take, hey, man, niggas just talking shit wherever it might be. He ain't come slap your mama. Yeah. He ain't come rob you. He ain't come shoot at you. Whatever it might be, and it wasn't worth a man's life getting taken and, and being hawked and stalked down like that. You I know? agree. It's I just agree. It's just that simple. You know, people got the misconceptions of all kind of shit behind that man death, but every all the real ones know, man, that shit was some lame not cool shit and y'all took a great nigga from his family and kids you know definitely and just to know that that type of shit is uh would lead a ignorant nigga to hunt you down like that it make everybody that's a rapper or entertainer like man me watch my ass because these niggas out here is ignorant yeah yeah you, know? you and even with the way that that transpired and looking at what happens to just looking at that pmb guy that just got yeah. killed that roscoe's Dropping your uh, uh, location, uh, location or, mm -hmm. or getting on IG yeah. before. How serious is that when it come down to uh, how you move? Versus, you know, because we come from the old school. Yeah. We never did have to think about Like you just explained, going to get pimp. You had to, mm -hmm. nigga had to tell you, go down here and go make, down a here left, make a right. And when yeah. you go down there, turn over mm -hmm. there. And that it's going to be a blue house exactly. right there. And turn right there. It's a yeah. red car in the red yard. Red car going to be a dope. Man, come on, man. Thing. I don't even see the you red know. car. You yeah. know, you done went. Mm -hmm. Three, four blocks yeah. trying to figure Even it out. Even that day, shit, I'm blowing outside. Bop, 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 just bop, trying bop, to figure bop, it bop, out. And he come outside. Like, exactly. Be with me, but you know? just just give me a little spill on how you feel about dropping locations and just dealing with that, you know? I, I don't I don't think these young cats on no pin your location type shit, you know, but it's, it's in the raps. Drop your location, I'm going to come you. It's in the raps, you know? So it, it's, it's, like I say, man, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of ignorant shit in hip hop now. Because the module has been destroyed, they destroyed the CEO, they destroyed the the money making aspect, and now they destroying the, the the rapper. Wow! So do you do do you all the because people die all the time. It ain't really just we look at the rappers that die, but it's people dying that's not rappers. Yeah, but we didn't. I mean, I don't think hip hop was created for death. It wasn't. It was, it was created for fun. It was when created. It, it, it was created. It was created for information. It was created for fun. It was created for like a, a, a immediate club, a private club of those who understood the culture. You know, you come on, man. Last time you heard Before about a, a jam at the park. Before Pac and you know Biggie, what I'm saying a jam at the park was a jam at the park. But but before Pac and Biggie, give me. I don't remember who could who was when was there a situation where where it came to a killing. Before Pac and Biggie in rap. Oh, man. I don't think it was no killing, but you had... I, I'm talking about a killing. I ain't, you know, we, we did a little back and forth. Before Biggie and Pac, it was like the gang, the gang culture, so it was a lot of killings. Of course, but I'm talking about a mainstream... It wasn't a mainstream... Artists that got killed like that? No. It wasn't. No, because, again, the culture started accepting that we was going in another direction due to the, you know, the machine. The machine start putting all type of aspects into hip hop that wasn't hip hop, so people stop saying hip hop. You know, respecting my nigga pimp. You start saying country rap tunes. The West Coast started had saying the gangster. Uh, what what did uh Warren G call this shit? Um, G funk era. G funk era. G funk era. So everybody started moving away from what the whole culture of hip hop was. You know, it's still hip hop, but the hip hop module was not built for death. Hip hop was built for culture. You know, having fun. Uh, the news report. We always took gangster right. These niggas reporting what's going on in the hood. Yeah. So you can't you can't say that MC8, Scarface, Spice One, C Bowls, all those people did not have influence on us. Now so you right. When you hear people say, oh, "Man, the OG let the young niggas down," like, "Hey, my nigga, y'all era was doing y'all era, but our era was was hell of a lot more gangster than this era to me." Yeah. 
Yeah, no, you're right. You know, so the influence of hip hop is 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 what it is. It's just people got to understand how the module has gotten destroyed. Did you, you know? and throughout your uh, career, you you didn't have to go sit down no time, did you? No, I got popped on IT and manifested some out my damn mouth I shouldn't have said. Really, man, I said I'm doing shit on IT and called a case on IT and a week later coming from the Bayou class. How did, how much time did you do? I did four years of probation. Four years of probation. Calashoot Parish. Because of because of what you spoke, you just said something. That's powerful. Man, you hear me? That's powerful. You <laughs> because when you say something, it man, becomes I, you don't you hear it, man. Me? I, I freestyled in a DSR tape when they first got on. Hey, you love the you love DSR though. Then my little bro, man. Man, big tug shout out to my, my boy bro. Fat Bastard. You you, you caught you text me the other day, yeah, nigga. Then my little bros, man. But even that, you know, once you know, I was been like that, but growing up like that, that was my first time ever going through something that I know I manifested out my mouth. Yeah, but you say you did four years on probation. You did it. Yeah. Excuse a lot me. of niggas don't. I mean, I had to go to fucking Lake Charles shit once a month for four and a half I know, years. but you did it. Yeah, I did, but it was the scariest shit ever because I was fucking up. Of course, but, but you me, did but it, let though. Let me tell you the blessing, though. I ended up having a, a probation officer that was in the hip-hop game. Dang, that's love. He fucked around with um, X-Mob. And that's, 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 how, that's how you got a little bit of... Got leniency. That, got that leniency. Yeah. Because when I when I first got on paper, kept saying, man, you look familiar, you look familiar. And I wouldn't know anyone say, man, I'm a, I'm, I'm a rapper, whatever, whatever. I'm like, nah, you don't know me, whatever. I come report one day, threw my CD on things, man, this you. I said, yeah, you knew that. He said, I've been reading goddamn tattoos. I've been kept saying, like, who the fuck cut him out? So he looked at said, my behavior, he got, oh my, he got three three CDs I dropped. That's love. Right down things. He said, man, I'm going to tell you what. After my third year, he said, man, just call me every month. Then he come back and do the whole little old ending class. He wanted to see you make it all. Yeah, he did. That's love, man. Yeah. That's love. You got to give me top three artists all time. You watch Boss Talk. So you got to give me top three artists all time, any genre. Any genre. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Number one. KRS one. I knew he was going to say that. You know, because yeah, he, really, he said. Fan. That's who he loved. KRS one. Number two. Number two. Scarface. That nigga go hard, don't he, man? Yeah. Who, I... That nigga can change his voice while he rapping better than anybody I ever seen. That I nigga. sit in my room. Huh? He didn't change it up, uh, man. What you want to change? <laughs> Yeah. Ah, that nigga go hard, man. Number three, man. Maybe it's answer for you, my vanilla foe. <laughs> that was my shit. That, oh yeah, number three. Yeah. I'm having thoughts of killing you, but I'm killing me first. <laughs> nah, you like that nigga, though? Hey, you? man, that was the Scarface is the, the Again, greatest rapper that's all the time for me, man. Yeah, you choice, man. Like in the like now in the south for me. Yeah, if a nigga say anybody, I say Scarface. Yeah. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie, lie. That, Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you go get any rapper and you be like, I'm gonna go get somebody, I'm bring them back. Man, face. I'm gonna get face on. Yeah, say, man. come on, let's let's cause do it. Face, cause face is face is face. Face <laughs> face is like Jay Z. Exactly, you and know? that's why niggas say Jay Z. I say face, nigga. Yeah. It's gonna be a problem. He'll yeah. tell and, you that. And I, and I didn't been around face when he worked, so he showed you the whole elements of hip hop. Yeah, like Brad Jordan is not fucking Scarface. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? That boy bad. See these people. These type of people taught me how to separate the man from the artist. That's real. And now you don't have that. And that's what I miss about hip hop. That's real. The kids don't get a chance to be Kwame for a day. Yeah. Dana Dane tomorrow. Slick Rick the next day. And now damn gangsta I want to be goddamn MC at EZ. <laughs> they don't have that. Everybody is whatever the fuck. You know, everybody yeah. on the same shit. Because they don't, nobody's. I'm on a mission, man, as an OG to teach these kids the module that's been destroyed to, to erupt your mind from a consciousness. Now, we grew up public enemy, X Clan. So it was cool to be. Black power, you know, unity, community. Mm -hmm. And it was still cool to say, nigga, I'm jamming that Sebo, I'm jamming that Spice One. Then it was still cool to say, man, I got my baddies on, then I got my slacks on, I'm Dana Dane, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all that was cool. So when you had your polka dot shirt and your baddies on, your penny loafers on, you know. Don't forget you might dye your hair right there. I had my shit dyed with the three stripes. Yeah, you, you got that eyebrow, right? You couldn't right? tell me I want Big Daddy King. <laughs> Number three. Number three, I got Harris one got Scarface. Number three is gonna be kind of hard for me because it's kind of like a tie. Yeah, you no, can't do you no ties. Eliminate. You got to give me one, brother. Just Bad one. Pat. Bad Pat, man. Damn, Bad that boy. Pat, man. Drop top. Man, my jam was Ghetto Dreams. Diamond Marine. Make my mama proud. <laughs> Ain't no holding out on my dreams. <laughs> I'm gonna go and get it. 
<laughs> Hit it like the lotto, dressed in that Murado. <laughs> that I'll get a shoe with a mask on the throttle. What, what, what was you at? Motto. What was you at when you first heard that, man? Man, I was shit in my motherfucking gray on gray old mobile. Just bought a cassette from. Was it ninety eight? This is like nine. No, I say what type? Do you know the ninety eight? The old mobile. Which what kind? Ninety eight. Scrub bodies. Smoke great. Real <laughs> tent. And I'm talking about this. Well, I, yeah. Hey man, this I pulled up in H town and, and met and met all them boys, you know, and you know, my 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 great Ace, brother, was it was it was it one of the ten or not? Yeah, mirror tent. Oh yeah, that all right. Yes, with AC the wood. Cole. Yes, with the wood with the fake wood panels inside, yeah, yeah. and the cassette player that pop out. Yeah, it fold out. It got to fold out. Yeah, right. what, what about that spray? You spray it every now and then. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. we had, that, had that, that spray. That cherry. Yeah, I'm from the era, man. <laughs> You know, if, if people ever get the uh, Judy Beverly book, she spoke on the Shout three, out Judy Beverly, I'll be texting. She spoke on the elements of the Third Coast culture back then. Yeah. So I grew up sipping, drinking, and smoking lovelies, and smoking weed, and you know, that's, that's what it was, man. You know, you, you, you just wasn't, people here at school tape and hear a nigga tongue tied, and don't know it made full of that shit. Mm. You know, but it was fun. It wasn't serious. You know, and I said, like, I got a nephew doing time in the pen right now, free young pig. And um, I got another nephew out here named Gutter J. You need, you need to get him on your show. Okay. Gutter J, he from Pleasant Grove. He from um, One Up Gang, CCA Entertainment. Real, real. I watched him as a baby rapping in his house with his dad, whatever, wow. whatever. Real talented, man. But I always grew up telling him on the road, man, we're going to have some fun with this shit or pack a gun with this shit. Wow. And y'all choose. Like, oh, we're going to have some fun with this shit. So I tell him my time, man, have fun with this shit, bro. I'll let. We caught a hundred dollar mask. Hundred dollar mask on, man. They ain't gonna get you no fans. Wow. And now today, you see the fans is is want to be connected to you for your selfishness, who you are. Mm -hmm. You coming up in the game, the fans didn't want to know if you worked on cars, if you was a dope. They didn't give a fuck, long as you was jamming. Mm -hmm. And everybody want to know is it really real? And it, it wasn't about that. It was the entertainment. It's called entertainment, and we the only genre in this music game who has lost the aspects of entertainment. Mm -hmm. I tell young cats all the time, man, if you got 20 bowls, nigga, say 200. Say 2,000 to keep the, to keep the, to keep the honest source of nigga effect to your, to your jam. Mm -hmm. We blew up 80 calls. Wow. Spice One killed 10,000 people before you got the track number five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and now we the ginger where everything is, is you can catch a case and they use your lyrics. Yeah, that's real. Well, goddamn it, you ever seen a R and B artist get yours? His his his, his, his t Taylor Swift lyrics or Britney Spears lyrics or and it, and it just show you again how the module man of, of what we call this hip hop thing has been destroyed. Man, sure. How how important is God God in your life? We are gonna go back to that one more time. Man, God is important in everybody's life if you're a believer. Real talk. Because faith without works is dead. Real talk. And if you out here on this road, call yourself being an uh, Rapper, singer, whatever it is, and you ain't got God with you. I wouldn't be the where I'm where I'm at right now with this music shit if, if I didn't rely on God. I had a lot of time in the car by myself, you know, and I didn't did shit on the streets where I'm riding dirty. Wow. And I know I'm praying the whole time. Might be jamming, but boy, Lord, just let's get to the Who that shit jam? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. People has lost their aspect because nobody want to talk about how these how the machine has turned against us. Wow. You feel me? Man, we love you, Cottonmouth, man. You killed it. Um, we, Man, how can people get a hold of you? I got to ask. Uh, Cottonmouth Jesse with a K. It's with a K. And uh, OG Cottonmouth on Twitter. Other than that, go outside, put a Batman light up. God damn it, I'm coming. Hey, yeah. hey, did you did you get everything out of Cottonmouth? Yes, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, brother. Yes, sir. You know how oh, we do it over too, here. Man. We appreciate you for coming, blessing the platform, man. Yeah. That's what we're here for. You've been seeing us. Everybody know we ain't, we ain't letting up on these. Right, we man, only I know the, the neck, I know the, I know, yeah. the, I know, the, I know the soundtrack. <laughs> All that. I was looking forward to speaking with her. Miss Jamaica, she, I, she gonna bring it every time. You know, I was looking forward to really speaking with you because, uh, you know, I'm a, the same thing, hip hop. I'm a, I'm a dance hall fanatic. I'm a Capricorn. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm a Capricorn oh. lover. I'm a scissor lover. So when I watch the show, you know, in my brain, I can't wait to get it's that called, habit. His name is Capleton, not Capleton. Get him. Capleton. Look, yeah. you know, they get serious about the culture. Oh, man, trust me. You said, hey, you, hey, you ever Have go you over been? there? Oh, my I'm God. I'm trying. You should go. Yeah, and Good see level. the same thing we talking about about the spiritual realm. Yeah, they go off of that. That real talk, real see, talk. Hip hop used to go off of that, 
but it wasn't like we was gonna put it out there. You know, she say rap. Yeah, star- because she say started rap started over cool there. Cool hurt. Yes, yeah, cool. Her. Look how she exactly. had. I just be messing with. I about said about having your own equipment, man. Yeah. When I was young, man, he DJing over there. He who gonna get? Who got the louder speakers? Yeah. And that's the and that's the whole history of DJ Snake. DJ Snake and Magic Mike was the bass. Damn, board. sure was. So it was like you know, remember Dragnet? Yeah, yeah. And then we turn his power on and the <laughs> crowd begin to move. Hey. You know. <laughs> That's that the nigga went back, didn't say, he? Man, I'm hip hop for real. No, I know. So I grew up with that. Like I grew up knowing, man, we need our own equipment. We gotta have some big ass speakers when we do our own shit. You know, and it's just the kids need to know that everybody wanna be hot, man. Why mm-hmm. you post my equipment, man? You you can make more money going around here doing parties and, and bring your homie on to rap at every party, man. You blow up. Man. Cottonmouth, I'm gonna be having I'm gonna call you back, man. man we gonna talk back. Because that's what I told ESG and that's what I told Lil Kiki and them, man. Like the foundation got to be right. That's and what the foundation people, is right. And, and if we do it, yeah. and we, that's what these platforms are about. That's just yeah. how the Bobo is super tight. Yeah, like, all that. like, like that's what it's supposed yeah. to be. And that's who opened up the markets to me, man. When people like look Kiki, you know what I'm? Mean? Yeah, I'm the first person to do a song with Kiki and Dallas. I'm the first person to do. Damn, one, you like Soldier Boy this thing? No, man. I'm just saying because <laughs> I'm on a mission, <laughs> man. I'm on a mission. And, and I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you. How you how you coming at me? So I ain't got to do the, the shit that's already been out here this man, week. Man, ain't nobody worried. Nah, about I'm not worried. About, I'm, I'm just saluting you because people do certain shit and let me know. Okay, well, they want to hear this type of bullshit, you know, whatever. No. And ain't no plex between me and little bro. I just no, want to let I you. Wanna know bring, you know. I want to bring. We try to what help I, people. Exactly. And 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 the only thing what helps me, Kyle, is like if a person had came on and stated something about the other. That's yeah. why they don't understand the back and forth. Yeah. It'd be because if, if a person had said something on here about you, mm-hmm. then I'm going to say, hey, man, you know, if you bring yeah. it up, we're going to talk yeah. about but it. People but like you, there's so much more to you. Yeah, exactly. And, and the, the history for and the foundation of the city depend on you. Exactly. And and, and I know that. And, yeah. and, and I don't want people to get it misconstrued. No, not misconstrued. So I, I look at it as a, a opportunity yeah. for me to do the right thing by saying, man, look what we got here. Yeah. And, I, and this is the way it came on the show, and we're going to present it the man, way it's supposed to be presented. And it's all organic. It's all That's real. real. Conversation. That's and, real. And, and what you're saying and what I'm saying is the same thing. It's like I appreciate a cat that's got a platform for people like me to show people and talk about the history. Yeah. Of Texas, yeah, the top of Texas, or the, bottom, or, or the bottom of Texas, are just worldwide. I just Texas. told like you, you coming said, back, nigga. Man, yeah, I'm coming back. <laughs> Check boss, it, man. Boss talk one on one. What a boss's talk, man. Yeah. Hey, man, it's been another great segment with Cottonmouth, man, yeah. the official Miss Jamaica yeah. on Boss Talk One on One. What a boss's talk. Yes, and we sir. out.